What's up you guys, it's Wolfgang back with another video. We're here at Agua on a Saturday night. Into the 2-5 streets we go. Not gonna bore you guys, drop a like on this video, subscribe if you're new, and immediately let's just jump right into the action. Let's go! We ended up making $384 in 15 minutes waiting for the 2-5 seat to open up. Ended up getting Ace Queen twice, Pocket Kings, Pocket Aces, and finally we're into the 2-5 for $2,000. Continuing the hot streak, first hand I looked down at the 2-5 table is Pocket Aces. I'm in the small blind. I ended up posting $7 because of a missed blind. There's one limp and the button now raises it up to $30. Action's back over to me and obviously I'm coming in for a three bet. I make it a cool Benjamin here, a hundred bucks and the opponent puts in the call. We're off to a flop which comes four, four, four. We flop a boat. I decided to get a little bit tricky here and check it over to the button. If he had a hand like King Jack, King Queen and I check it over to him, he might just rip it all in. He only has around 150 left in his stack. Sure enough, my thoughts were correct. I check, he rips it in for $150 and I think about it for, Oh, I don't know, maybe a half of a second. I snap call him and we're off to a run out, which comes a 10 of spades followed by the seven of spades. Sure enough, he turns over one of those hands, ace king offsuit, and we had him in pretty rough shape there on the flop. We're gonna take down the first pot of the night. Up 200 bucks, we downgrade from aces to pocket queens, the ladies, and I raise it up to $20. There's two callers, so we're off to a flop, which comes queen four, three, bang, we flop top set. Great start to the night here at Agua Caliente. And when the action checks over to me, I decided to lead out into the field for $25. Only the small blind decides to pay the price and he's gonna come with me off to the turn. Turn is not the best card in the deck. It comes the Jack of Diamonds, completing the front door flush draw. But when the opponent checks to me for a second time, we have to go for value here. Not only do we have a set so we could back into a boat, we don't have a diamond in our hand, so we need to protect our hand. Say he has a hand like Queen 10 with the Queen of Diamonds, we can't just check here and let him get a free card so I bet out for $65 if we get raised we're in a tough spot but depending on the size we're probably just gonna have to call and hope for a board pairing river we're not faced with that tough decision he puts in the call and that brings in the six of spades on the river expecting him to check to me for a third time that's not what he does though he leads into me for hundred and fifty dollars I snap call him here I'm not even gonna think about it if he has the flush good for you sir but I have top trips and that's good enough for 150 bucks the opponent turns over five of diamonds three of spades so he picked up a diamond draw on the turn and rivered a straight draw but ultimately he just had one pair and we're gonna take down that $540 pot up $470 early on in this 2-5 session. Nothing to complain about so far. A few limps to me and I look down at 10-9 offsuit from the big blind. I check my option and what does the flop come? Jack 8-7, bang! We flop the straight. The absolute nutter butters here and I check it into the field. Early position bets help for $15 and how many people call them? Oh, I don't know, maybe three? So with four people putting in 15 bucks, he actions back over to me. I have the joint but it is a very draw heavy board say someone has a hand like 7 10 8 10 jack 10 something like that they have a gutter to chop with us any two spades are also drawing super live so i decide to raise it up to 60 dollars could even size up a little bit larger i don't really think anyone's folding a set or a flush draw here on this board and in this 2-5 action game two out of the four players put in the call and we're off to the turn which comes the clean king of clubs shouldn't really change too much and the actions on me with 240 $40 in the middle. I decide to size up now and bet almost three quarters of the pot for 175 bucks. Someone has a hand like sevens or eights or the flush or straight draw, they need to pay the price. Otherwise, I'm fine taking this down here with my made hand. And that's exactly what happens. Early position and the button both fold. And we're three for three in this 2-5 game, up nearly $600 early on. Next hand of note, we have 2600 in our stack and I look down at king 10 of spades from the button. Few limps to me and I raise it up to $20. Pretty standard so far and you know what else is standard? Two callers were going three ways to the flop. When the action checks to me on a jack 6-4 board with two diamonds, I decide to check behind here. Into two opponents with really no draws, I decide to see what the turn card brings in, which gives us a little bit more help. It comes the eight of spades. We pick up the backdoor spade draw. When the action checks to me for a second time, I now decide to take up the bet 
playing lead for $40. Actually, I never really gave it up since everyone checked through on the flop, but that's a pretty passive line, two people checking flop and turn, so now I'm gonna stab for 40 bucks. Middle position doesn't like my stab, he puts in the call, and we end up rivering what I think should be the best hand when the king of clubs peels off on the river. When he checks to me for a third time, there's 140 in the middle, and I decided to go for a tricky $25 bet. Looking to milk him for one last street of value, he ends up folding though, but no worries, we're taking down this pot, and we're still on a clean sheet here. No one has beaten us so far at Agua Caliente. This next one is a fun one. We have 2,700 in our stack, and I look down at the ladies once again from the hijack. Jesse, a good reg here at Agua Caliente, and a good friend, raises it up to $20. He's on my right. I decide to 3-bet him to $65, and just for context, I've done this before with 5-6 suited, pocket 4s, things of that nature, so my 3-bet here doesn't exactly scream strength to Jesse, which is good to note. Another good friend, Brad, he's in the cutoff. He puts in the call, and Jesse does as well. We're going three ways to the flop, which seems pretty harmless. It comes 10-6-5 rainbow. Jesse checks it over to me, and I have a decision. When in between two opponents on a board that isn't really too scary, I usually like to start with a check. It also gives us a little bit of information. If Brad now bets out for 100 bucks and Jesse re-raises to 300 or 350, pretty likely that someone has us beat with pocket 10, 6s, or 5, so we do save some money in the long run. Additionally, by checking the flop, it underplays our hand, so I like to check over to Brad and see what he does. When he checks behind, we end up seeing a free turn card, which comes the 4 of clubs. Really shouldn't change too much, although 7-8 now makes a straight. Jesse checks it over to me for a second time, and now we definitely can't check it over for a second time. I need to go for a bet, and I elect to go for $115. $195 in the middle, $115 seems like a fair price. Brad gets out of the way, but don't tell Jesse that. He puts in the call and are off to a river, which comes now the deuce of clubs. Backdoor clubs now get there. I do have the queen of clubs in my hand for what that's worth. Jesse checks it over to me, and I go for $165 bet looking to charge any of the jack 10 maybe 7 6 type hands in his range but jesse's not going to pay us off here he mucks his card and our clean sheet lives on we're still undefeated I promise you guys I play worse hands than this, but I look down now at pocket aces in the plus one position. The straddle is on, and I raise it up to $35. Three callers is what we get. We're going four ways to the flop here, already 140 in the middle, and the flop comes 653 rainbow. When the action checks to me, I'm not going to be checking back here four ways. Don't really want to give anyone a free card. There are a few draws, and I want to keep putting money in the middle. I bet out for $60. The hijack's the only taker here, and we're off to the turn, which comes to do of clubs now bringing in ace four having the straight i'm first to act and i decide to go for a half pot size bet here 125 dollars just looking to get value from any overpair maybe hand like sevens through tens could probably pay me off here for a few more streets 125 is the bet and he quickly puts in the call interesting spot here we're off to the river which pairs the board we now beat a hand like 6-3 but i don't really expect him to be playing this either way though i need to go for one last street of value versus any overpair could be hard for them to fold if i have a hand like ace king of hearts ace king of clubs i might still do this as well either way though i rip it in for 300 dollars covering him and he makes what seems like a pretty easy fold he folds pretty quickly oh well though still nobody has beaten me yet tonight and it feels pretty good not gonna lie if any of you guys are feeling as lucky as i've been in this session and you want to play in a good online game i put a link in the top of the description go click that you'll need telegram to download it but it's absolutely awesome they have 2k free rolls every week mariano rampage karan and myself all play on it and it's super fun you'll catch me in those streets they have small stakes large stakes a good online place to play if you're in the united states so yeah go click that link and uh, hopefully i can keep the run good going for you guys here in this video let's go Next hand of the night, I look down at King Jack Offsuit and I raise it up to $25 over a limper and the button puts in the call. The big blind has some ideas. He goes for the three bet and you'd expect it to be somewhere around $75, $90, something like that. No, he three bets me to $45. Myself and the button both put in the call, which brings a 998 with two spades board and the action ends up getting checked around. 
That brings in the Ten of Spades in on the turn, giving us a gutter to the straight. Any queen would be a good card, although we'd prefer not to see the Queen of Spades. When the action checks around for a second time, the Queen of Diamonds comes in. Our prayer is answered. Bang! We river the straight. Great spot for us. The big blind decides to check. I bet out for $125 into the $135 pot. Possible someone could call us with any queen that they just rivered, or maybe even a 10, just thinking I'm trying to steal the pot. Little did they know, I'm on absolute fire right now. I can't miss, and the button is a non-believer, and he puts in the call for $125. Our buddy in the big blind, Brad, he mucks his cards. Obviously, I show what should be the nuts on this board, and the opponent mucks. Said top two pair, which I guess was queen 10. Either way, though, we're up $1,300 on the session. And now we move on to another good hand. We look down at queen jack of hearts. I'm in the big blind, the plus one and middle position both limp. Our buddy Jesse on our right in the small blind raises it up to $40. I'm not going anywhere. I'm on an absolute tear right now. I'm not going to fold a suited Broadway that's connected. I put in the call and plus one and middle position both call. We're going four ways to the flop. Queen jack of hearts would play nicely on a queen jack five two clubs board bang we flop top two great spot for us and now jesse bets out into the field for 60 dollars interesting spot here there's two players left to act behind us jesse just bet into the field and we're playing pretty deep he has around 1300 in his stack i decide for that reason to raise it up to 150 probably could even go larger somewhere around 200 dollars but think about it i have two pair if someone has a hand like ace king king 10 two clubs in their hand or jesse could have a hand like jacks although we do block it having one in our hand they're gonna pay off a large bet here and a lot of them are drawing pretty live for that reason i make it 150 and the player in the plus one position puts in the call jesse does as well interesting spot here still three ways to the turn and it comes the three of spades jesse checks it over to me pause this video guys i want to try something new here interesting spot where three ways to the turn There's a lot of draws and made hands out there i want to know what you guys would do when jesse checks it over to us would you a start with a check would you B, go for a $200 bet around a third of the pot? Would you go for a $400 bet for around two thirds pot? Would you end up betting full pot for 600? Or E, would you go all in for around $1,000 effective? Let me know down in the comments what your choice is and let's see what I end up doing. If you guys said C, bet around $400 into the $600 pot, you would have been correct with my logic, although I'm not sure if I'm perfect. I bet out for $390. That gets the plus one player to put in the call. They're all in for less, $375 is the effective bet and our buddy jesse gets out of the way so our heads up to a river looking for a clean river which i don't know if we actually get it comes the ace of diamonds now king 10 makes broadway don't really know if they're calling it off for 375 with an open-ended straight draw but i turn over my two pair hoping to be good the opponent shakes her head and mucks her cards we're taking down that 1400 pot and nobody has beaten us yet on a night. Unprecedented for me in this vlog so far. If you guys appreciate the run good in this video so far, make sure you drop a like on this video. And if you're new, what are you guys doing? Hit that subscribe button as well. What is up you guys? Little mid session update here. Had to do it. We are running like the absolute sun right now. We can't miss any flops. Obviously we're up like 2100 at the moment, which is insane. If you guys wanna keep the run good going, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. Just a great session so far here at Agua. Really appreciate all this support hopefully i can run up to like 3k tonight that'd be pretty sick uh let's just jump right back into the hands looking to keep our hot streak alive i have 4100 in my stack yes i have 4100 at a 2-5 game and i raise it up to 20 dollars with ace queen offsuit from middle position we end up getting four callers which isn't ideal we end up going five ways to the flop which comes nine nine deuce with two diamonds the action checks over to me and i decided to go for a c bet here of 35 dollars looking to thin the field a little bit although i don't really know what my bet accomplishes I do have the queen of diamonds in my hand. I could back into a diamond flush or just hit an ace or queen and hope to be could. But my $35 bet gets raised by our buddy Brad and that's kind of why I don't like betting here in this spot. Probably should just check it over and see what he does. But when he raises me to $85, I get a little bit sticky here. I'm on an absolute tear. And how can I lose? I put in the call. Well, I guess one way to lose is if the turn comes a deuce of spades. I check it over to Brad and he bets out for 125. Obviously, I'm not gonna call this now when he bets two streets into a lot of opponents so I just mucked my cards and we're on to the next hand pretending like we didn't just lose a hand.
When the table breaks though, that's not good news for us. That was an absolute dream spot. Hoping to keep the run good going at this next table, I look down at pocket queens once again. There's three limps to me and I raise it up to $30 and we only get called by the middle position player. Heads up to a flop which gives us an overpair 10-5-5, pretty great spot. And on a dry board here, I look to go for some deception and I check it over to middle position. Probably a board that more likely than not I'm going to go for a seabed on. But when I check it over to middle position, he decides to check behind, which brings in what seems like a harmless four of hearts. I now retake the betting lead and bet out for $45. It looks like we got the opponent to do something funky. He now re-raises me to 115. Not exactly sure what he's representing here. He might be doing this with a 10, just looking to get me to fold a hand like King Queen, Ace Queen, Ace King, or he could have just turned a boat having pocket fours. Either way though, when I check the flop and bet the turn, I'm not going to be folding for $70 more. I put in a stack of reds and we're off to the river, which comes the eight of hearts. Not exactly sure if this helps him or not. I decide now to go for a tenth of the pot for $25. He might take this as a blocking bet with a hand like ace, king, king, queen, and he might just re-raise me here and try to get value, which I would definitely like and snap call. Also, my $25 bet could get called by any speculative draws at brick off on the river. And that's exactly what he says out loud. He says he just wants to see my hand and tosses in the $25. Obviously that means I'm good with my queens. I table my cards and he mucks his hand. $350 more dollars coming my way. With the knight coming to the close, we look down at queen jack of hearts for one last time. I'm in the small blind. The straddle is on. Brad in middle position puts in the limp. I decide to raise it up to $50 and only Brad puts in the call. With $110 out there, we see an ace nine four two heart flop. Action's on me. I'm out of position to our buddy. I'm going to have a lot of strong aces in my hand. Additionally, I have the front door heart draw and the back door straight draws. So I decide to go for a half pot size bet here. Good news for us, Brad folds and we're taking down the last hand of the night. Really cool before I rack up and head to the cage, a guy sits down at the table who I've seen a bunch before, but I've never caught him on film. I wanted to show you guys. Before saying his name, does anyone know who he is? Here's a hint, he got second place in the WSOP to none other than Stu Unger in that exact American flag jacket that he's wearing. Yes, he goes by the name of Perry Green and he's a local here at Agua Caliente. Super cool to be playing with one of the legends of the game and honored to just be doing this for a living. It's pretty awesome. With that little bit of history, I end up racking up my chips and head to the cage. What's up you guys, checking back in after that session. While waiting for the 2.5, we booked a $384 profit. Then jumped in the 2.5 and ran about as good as we ever had here at Agua. This definitely was my biggest win at Agua Caliente. So glad all the studying and uh, the run good has accumulated into this one video. But yeah, we got out for almost a $400 win in the 1.3. Got into the 2.5 for 2,000, out for 4,025, a 2025 profit. If you guys made it this far, I really appreciate all of you guys. Please consider subscribing if you're new. Drop a like and a comment. I'll respond to all the positive ones. I hope all of you run as well as I have in the last couple of videos. Good luck on the felt as always, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.